Here we're gonna look at two limits which seem fairly similar, but we're going to evaluate them in two very different ways. So the first one is the limit as x goes to zero of one minus e to the two x times sine 3x over the absolute value of 4x. So notice we've got one, two, three, four in there, so that's kind of a nice touch. And then the next one is the same limit, except we have a floor around our limiting function. Okay, so let's maybe calculate this first limit first. It's not really gonna require much more than L'Hopital's rule. So let's look at this. We've got the limit as x goes to zero. I'm just gonna rewrite this one minus e to the two x times sine of three x over the absolute value of 4x. So technically we need to calculate two things because we have this absolute value built in. So we need to calculate a right-handed limit as well as a left-handed limit. But luckily we can do each of those with L'Hopital's rule. So let's maybe go ahead and calculate the right-handed limit first. So I'll put a plus here. And then I can erase these absolute values because if we're doing the limit as x approaches zero from above, then the absolute value of 4x is equal to 4x. Okay, cool. So now we'll go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. So that's gonna give us the limit as x approaches zero from above. Now we need to take the derivative of the numerator. Notice that is gonna involve using the product rule. We have this one minus e to the two x times sine three x. So that'll give us three times one minus e to the two x times cosine of three x. So that's like the derivative of this sine function. And then we need to subtract from that 2e to the 2x times sine 3x. Good, so that would be like the derivative of this one minus the exponential function. Then we need to take the derivative of the denominator, which is equal to just four. Okay, now we can check, do we still have an indeterminate form or no? But if we plug zero into this, notice we'll have one minus e to the zero. So that's gonna be equal to zero. And then we'll have sine of three times zero. So that's also equal to zero. So this transforms this limit into something that's not an indeterminate form. This is of the form zero over four, making our entire limit zero. I'm not gonna go through the details on the other sided limit because it's essentially the same thing. But what that gives us is the value of this first limit is zero. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the value of this second limit, which is the same function, but now we have a floor. And we're going to actually need a tool in order to evaluate this. And this is the following like geometric fact. For theta between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, we have cosine theta is less than or equal to sine theta over theta, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay, let's go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll look at this inequality. Now we're ready to look at this inequality. And I've drawn a picture to well, really help us out here. And I've drawn a picture where the theta value is between 0 and pi over 2. But notice if we get that this inequality quality holds between zero and pi over two, then it's also gonna hold between minus pi over two and zero, and that's because everything here is an even function. Okay, so let's say what we've got here. So I've got this circle that is of radius one, so it's a unit circle, and then I have this ray emanating from the origin, which I have called O, and that is with an angle of theta from the positive x-axis, and then I have two important triangles here. I've got triangle AOC, which has this length right here uh, in orange. And then I've got another one, which is BOC. So I've got a smaller triangle AOC and a larger triangle BOC. And then in between those, I have the sector of the circle, which is like kind of the pizza slice if you were to slice along this ray and the x-axis. So notice we can set up a nice inequality with that. So we have area of triangle AOC is gonna be less than or equal to the area of the sector of the circle, which I'm not gonna name that. It's the only sector of the circle in this like situation here. And then we have that's gonna be less than or equal to the area of triangle BOC, which is this larger one. 
So now let's maybe go ahead and calculate these parts here. So notice uh, triangle AOC has the following measurements. Notice the base of this triangle is equal to one. And we can see that because it goes from the origin to this point one zero. And so that means we just need to calculate the height of this triangle. And then we've got the area. So notice that the height of this triangle is the length of this line AD, but that's going to be the same thing as the Y coordinate of um, this intersection of the ray with the circle. But we know that that's exactly how sine and cosine are defined, or that's one of the definitions of sine and cosine. So we know that this point right here is cosine theta, sine theta. So that Y coordinate is gonna be sine theta, so that means this height here is equal to sine theta. But that tells us that our area is one half base times height, so that means we can rewrite here as sine theta divided by two. Okay, good. And then that's gonna be less than or equal to the area of the sector of the circle with, rate, with uh, angle theta. So I'll let you guys look up the definition or the area of a sector of a circle with angle theta, but what you get is theta over two. That's actually pretty easy to derive just by the fact that this is taking up a certain amount of the circle. Now we need to calculate the area of the triangle BOC. So let's see area BOC, well, we're gonna need the base and the height here. So the base is gonna be equal to one, because notice it's got the same line segment as the base of triangle AOC. So now we need to find the height, which is the distance from here to here. So maybe I'll call this thing right here H. Good. Well, what we're gonna do is use the fact that triangle BOC is similar to triangle AOD. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So triangle BOC is similar, not congruent, but similar to triangle um, AOD. But now that allows us to set up a proportion for this height. So notice that we have this height over one, so H over one, because that's gonna be the height over the base, is gonna be the same thing as the height right here, this segment AD over the base, this segment OD, but that's gonna be sine theta over cosine theta, but that's tangent theta. So in other words, we have the height here is tangent theta. Good, and then again, using the formula one half base times height for the area of a triangle, we have this is tangent theta over two. Okay, so now all we have to do is take this inequality to this inequality. So let's see what we can do. So maybe first off, we can uh, multiply all sides of this by two times cosine. So notice that's gonna get rid of the two in the denominator. And furthermore, that's gonna turn this tangent into a sine because tangent is sine over cosine. So multiplying by two times cosine so that's gonna give us sine theta times cosine theta is less than or equal to theta times cosine theta, which is less than or equal to sine theta, like that. Now next, I'll divide this entire inequality by sine times cosine. So that's gonna leave me with one is less than or equal to theta over sine theta, which is gonna be less than or equal to one over cosine theta. Now I'll go ahead and put a box around that and notice that taking the reciprocal of this inequality will give us our goal inequality. Okay, so we've established this tool. And now we're ready to look at our floor limit. And we're gonna do this in two stages as well. And those will be the two one-sided limits. So here we're gonna look at the limit as x goes to zero from above of this floor. So I'm gonna write this as the floor of one minus e to the two x times sine of three x but now I know that if x is positive, then um, the absolute value of 4x is just gonna be 4x. So we can get rid of that like this. Good. And now I wanna look at when x is bigger than zero, but close to zero to get some sort of idea for what's going on with this limit. 
notice it's likely that this floor is just gonna take us down to some certain value. And if we pick X close enough to zero, it's gonna be constant in that realm. So where do we need to take X? Well, if you do a little bit of calculation, you'll see that X needs to be in the following spot. So here we're gonna take X to be in the intersection of these two open intervals. So zero to pi over six, intersect zero to one half natural log of two. Okay, good. So you might say, well, how do we come up with those? And isn't pi over six or one half natural log of two, isn't one of those bigger than the other? So couldn't we put this as just one interval, yeah, we could, but we would kind of erase the fact that um, this calculation was involved. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and look at this. So here we know that zero is going to be less than sine of three X over three X, which is gonna be less than one. Okay, good. So we see that because of this over here, Notice if x is between 0 and pi over 6, then 3x is going to be between 0 and pi over 2, so we're good to go there. But notice this object is not exactly inside our limit, but we can manipulate this until it looks like something inside our limit by multiplying by 3 over 4. So notice if we multiply this entire thing by 3 over 4, we're going to get 0 is less than sine of 3x over 4x, which is less than 3 over 4. And I'll point out that I have loosened the bottom end of this inequality. Instead of having cosine below this, I'm just going to have 0 below this. Notice cosine is always going to be positive on this open interval, so definitely we could just like put a zero to the left of everything and then erase the cosine part. And that's because we don't need something as strict as this inequality for our setup. Okay, so now we have this thing right here. So that's good to see. And then now we need to look at this one minus e to the two x. So notice that um, for x in this region, so zero to one half natural log of two, we have e to the two x is going to be between one and two. So let's see maybe how do we see that? Well, e to the two x is an increasing function and evaluated at zero, we're going to get one, so e to the zero is one. And then evaluating at this upper bound, this one half natural log of two, that'll give us two. And that's because of the inverse relationship of uh, the exponential and the logarithm. So we have this, but now inserting this inequality into this one minus e to the two x will show us that one minus e to the two x is going to be between negative one and zero, like that. But now if we take the product of these two, what we will see is that one minus e to the two x times sine of three x all over four x is gonna be between zero and minus three quarters, like that. But then finally taking the floor here, because we have a strict inequality right here, we'll have the floor of this is always going to be equal to negative one. Okay, but that tells us that this one-sided limit here is negative one. Okay, so maybe I'll clean up the board and we'll look at the limit as x approaches zero from below. Okay, now we're ready to look at this left-handed limit. And so we're taking negative values of x that are approaching zero from below. So the important thing here is that the values of x that we are interested in are negative, which makes this absolute value of 4x equal to negative 4x. So I've used that to flip the order of subtraction 1 minus e to the 2x to e to the 2x minus 1. Now we're going to do the same kind of game with an inequality. We just have to figure out how close to 0 do we need x. And in this case, it's a bit simpler because we don't have to worry about the exponential function growing because we're dealing with negative values of x where that exponential function is bound. So we're gonna take x between minus pi over six and zero. And notice that by the same argu argument that we used on the last board, we'll have sine of three x 
over 4x is going to be between 0 and 3 quarters. Again, exactly with the same sort of argument that we used before. And then we can also bound this e to the 2x. So here, e to the 2x, well, that's always going to be positive. The limit as x goes to minus infinity is 0, so we can bound it below by 0. But then e to the 0 is 1, so it's bound above by 1, like this. But then we can turn this inequality into one that's more useful for our situation. And what we will see is that negative 1 is less than e to the 2x minus 1, which is less than 0. Now we can go ahead and put these two things together, and we'll see that negative 3 quarters is going to be less than e to the 2x minus 1 times sine of 3x over 4x, which is going to be less than 0. But that's going to be true for all x that are close to 0 but below 0. So that means if we take the floor here, that's going to take us down to negative 1. So we have the floor of e to the 2x minus 1 times sine 3x over 4x is equal to negative 1. Making this left-handed limit equal to negative 1, coupled with the fact that the right-handed limit was negative 1, means that this entire limit is negative 1. So I think it's pretty interesting here. Without the floor function, we got a limit of 0. With the floor function, we got a limit of negative 1. And that's a good place to stop.